Hi, my name is Chris Priest. What I'd like to do is walk you through some rendering techniques using marker and pencil. Uh, step one, you do need a well-defined drawing. This is the drawing we'll be using for these exercises. Now what we're going to focus on first in this first session is adding color and value to walls and the ceiling. Um, I do have a variety of markers with me. I have cool grays, warm grays, and French grays. Just to show you a little bit of difference between the uh, French gray and the warm gray, if you notice here, these are Prismacolor markers. The warm gray has a little bit of a violet hue to it. The French gray is a little more of a muted brown color. So uh, I will be creating some tan walls, so therefore I'll probably be using a little bit more of the French gray. Uh, with a little bit of the warm gray and then probably a little bit of cool gray also in the shadow areas. Now I highly recommend that if you have markers, uh, if you have a series of gray markers, you're going to want to use your 30s, 40s, 50s, 70s, um, you know, those percentage range of values because if uh, a 10% is really light and, and almost has no color. So I know students love to start using that. Uh, what I'm going to do first is I'm actually looking at my walls here. This is a window wall. If this, let's say this is a north or even a south facing window wall, there will be ambient light coming through depending on the overhangs. We're not going to have any really sharp shadows on this particular drawing, but ambient light will be coming through. So if ambient light is coming through, this wall, this header above the window, and then the corner of this wall, are going to be the darkest areas and then the light is going to come in and start highlighting the walls and the ceiling. So let's start by throwing in some dark values and I am going, um, as you can see, this is a um, French gray 70%. Okay, So I'm going to throw in some dark values with a French gray 70. I am just using a bond paper. So for example, if you created uh, a drawing using SketchUp. If you create a drawing using um, Revit, you can just simply go in, print it off on your printer, um, and use it. Now, I'm not worrying too much about going over the lines because I am doing a marker and pencil rendering. So therefore, uh, I, will, I will be able to cover up anything that I think is too dark. Um, or anything that I think didn't turn out just right. All right, so I'm using the broad tip. It does bleed a little bit, but don't, don't worry. Again, if it goes over the line a little bit, it doesn't matter. Uh, it just kind of gives a creative feel. Now, as you can tell from, as, from the time we started, as the marker dries and the fluids come out of the marker, the marker has a tendency to get a little bit lighter. I'm just throwing in some shadows here real quick while we're talking. Uh, I'll throw some shadows in under here as well. Just a little something. A uh, little something in this area. All right. So, uh, so that is, again, that's the French gray. It's got a little bit of a brown tone to it. And that was a French gray 70. Now I'm going to go back with a French gray 50. Now, the way these markers are designed, if you have a French gray 50, and this works best with the upper level numbers, and again, I'm not worried too much about little errors. If you look at walls, they're seldom perfect. Uh, so what I'm going to do is just kind of throw in, again, throw in some grays here and there. Um, what I was going to say is if you go in and you put down a stroke of 50 and then you let it dry completely and then you go back over it, it should be close to 60%. And then if you let that dry and you go back over it, it should be close to 70%. Now, it'll only work to a... Um, to a point and then it doesn't work any longer. Um, but if you only have a few values, you certainly can um, check that out. Let's see, I'm checking a couple markers here. Always have a scrap piece of paper with you. You know, I'm uh, looking at, this was a brick gray. I don't really like the brick gray so much. Um, notice also the pens, they have a fine tip and a broad tip. Unless you're doing graphic design work, you will never need the fine tip. Uh, the broad tip is an excellent tool. It's like a wide paintbrush. Plus, with the broad tip, you can get a really thin stroke, a really fine stroke, a really wide stroke. Okay? 
All right, I kind of like that color. And I'm trying to see if I have anything else. Nope, I have brick white and cream. So this is my cream. I'm going to take this cream marker and just kind of go over top. And I'm going to try to just really work top to bottom here. I'm going to scrub it in a little bit. It's okay because the paper bleeds. You can spend a little bit of time scrubbing in and uh, you won't get quite so much of a, uh, a marker stroke. All right, so I'm going to go over here, do the same thing. Okay, now what I actually would like is a little more of a brown tint to this wall. Um, so what I'm going to do is show you how to use your colorless blender. I know a lot of people um, love to use their clear blender or their colorless blender and they think what they can do is put down color on the paper and then use the blender to scrub the color around. Um, that will work if you're using vellum and some forms of marker paper but it doesn't work uh, on a bond paper. Uh, it doesn't work on a lot of types of paper. If you do not have a colorless blender, your cool gray 10 will work just fine. I do have a clear blender here. That. There we go. I found one that has some juice left in it. All right, so here's how you use your clear blender. What I have here is just a clear plate, and you could use a white plate, a styrofoam plate, whatever you want to use. Um, I want brown or some tan on that wall. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take a color brown, lay in here, and this is another way too. If you don't have an exact color that you want, but you have your material already picked out, you actually can put down several colors and blend your own color. So I kind of like that color. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my clear blender. I'm going to pick up some color, go back to my illustration, and then I'm going to lay that color down. All right, I'm going to go back, pick up some color, come in, lay the color down. Okay. Repeat that until I get what I feel is enough on this wall. And since the paper is wet, I actually can just kind of smudge this around a little bit. All right. Okay, so we're getting some color on that wall. All right, so here's uh, the next step in this process. We're going to let that dry for a second, and I'm going to do a, um, a little bit on the ceiling. And on the ceiling, I'm going to use uh, my warm grays. I'm going to start with a warm gray 50. And I am also going to use a straight edge on this, this one uh, because I do want to start getting a sharp edge along my ceiling line. So I'm going to follow my ceiling line this direction. And again, I'm not going to worry about perfection here. You're doing an illustration. It's a conceptual drawing. Okay, I'm going to go in, add a little bit of color. All right, so that was a cool gray, or I'm sorry, that was a warm gray 50. Uh, I'm now going to take it um, down to a lighter gray. This is a older version. Um, I am going to go ahead and throw some of the uh, French gray up here. I'm going to make kind of some swooping lines on the ceiling. Okay. What we need to do is just make sure that the ceiling has some value to it. Uh, I am going to take a cool gray and just kind of go over the whole thing. What I want is I want it to tie together. Now, I know you see some blotches, and that's okay. Blotches happen. But here's what we're going to do. This is where the whole thing begins to come to life. I'm um, going to let it dry, fading it a little bit here. Let it dry for a second. And then we're going to go in with a pencil. Now, if you look up at your ceiling, where your ceiling meets your wall, you'll see that there's like a little reflective light area often right at that crease as, say, the light from here is starting to come in on the window or come in from the window and hit the wall. So we're going to add a little bit of that highlight there. 
there's not really the same thing happening on this area, so I'm not going to bother with that.